Hi there, and welcome to Plug and Guru's Power Review for Native Instruments FM8. My name is John Skippy Limcool, and uh, this is part two of our review of FM8. Part one covered an introduction to the plugin and some shortcuts for the browser. Part two is going to be all about programming. We're going to look at both subtractive and FM synthesis and how to accomplish making sounds like that with FM8, because it can do both. If you don't have FM8, you really should get a demo version from nativeinstruments.com so that way you can follow along. And if you have Native Instruments FM8, load it up so you can follow along because copy what we're doing here and uh, you'll learn some tricks. All right. Now the music you're listening to, that's all made with sounds that I've created and you can download these sounds from my website, pluginguru.com. There's 12 you can download for free and there's 60 more for 30 bucks. And the best way to upgrade a synth is to add new sounds to it. So go get them. All right. Let's get to the review. First of all, I'm going to show you subtractive synthesis because while FM8 is a very powerful FM synthesizer, it's an equally powerful subtractive synthesizer. So let's start from scratch and let's make our own subtractive synthesizer patch. When you say new sound, this creates a single oscillator that is a sine wave and it's connected down to the mixer and straight out to your audio card. It's currently a sine wave. Now there's two types of sawtooths we can create. There's one where you use feedback. Let's right click to turn him off now that we've got him up. The other one, E, let's turn on E, set him to 80. Let's change him to the sawtooth waveform. So once we've changed him to a sawtooth, you'll notice it's a very filtered dark sounding sawtooth. In fact, look at the spectrum page and you can see that it's heavily filtered. But by using feedback, about 24, and a little bit of detuning. Let's go up here and detune him. Now this is more like additive synthesis at this point because I've added two waveforms together down to the mixer, no filtering, but we're going to double click on the mixer volumes to turn them off. And let's set to a 80 right here for these going now into Z because Z is our filter. So you right click to turn on Z and then you click and drag right here to bring up the volume of Z and it's heavily filtered. And the mix by default is set to two, which I don't know why they do that. So click and drag it all the way to mix setting to one. And you have a subtractive synthesizer. And if you want to make it bigger, there's a couple tricks you could do. One is to go to unison and give it a nice wide pan and some decent detuning. Bring up analog so it randomly will detune it just a little bit. If you bring it up too much, you'll hear it's too much. Go back to Z by clicking on Z. And let's get the filter envelope involved. So bring down the cutoff and bring up the envelope amount. So click and drag on the envelope. You can have a nice attack. And so you can play cool. If you wanted to get a cool attack, so you can use the pitch envelope generator to generate really nice attacks. And the trick to do for that is to hit pitch and right click once to add a new segment. And by right clicking to add that new segment, you can, we don't hear it yet because our envelope intensity is very low. So without this, double click. With it, That's a bit much, of course, but I want to make sure you hear it. So Pitchy G is a cool trick. And the Pitchy G can actually be used for a number of very useful other tricks. Um, the envelopes are able to be looping or pulsing. Right now it's pulsing. Let's change it to a sine loop. Now they're both changing up and down in pitch, right? If you go to the ops page, you can see that there's a pitch envelope generator on and off for each of these so turn it off for E, so it's only doing it to F. Now it's a little intense, so bring this down to a small amount. And you have built-in coursing. And that's only two operators. 
And if you add all six, it's going to become an even larger sound. So that should give you a good idea of some ideas you can do with, uh, with subtractive synthesis. And uh, now let's look at FM synthesis. All right, let's dig into FM synthesis. Now, the big difference here between subtractive and additive and now FM is that we now are dealing with a more complex, capable operator. Instead of just coming down here to the mixer and being combined like you do in an analog synthesizer, we're going to start doing things where we turn on E and we feed it into F. And by doing this, what we're doing is we're feeding so that we hear F, we don't hear E, but we hear E's effect on F. Let me show you visually. Here's a sine wave. I'll turn it up all the way. As I click and drag between these two operators, they're both turned on. They're both default sine wave. So bring it up, watch the waveform. It gets much more complex. That's the whole key of FM, is that this is feeding into F, and the end result, it's like math. You're multiplying. 3 times 3 does not equal 6. It equals 9. It's a bigger number than just the two combined together. So the same thing with FM. Let's go to ratio. And if you're on the on the specific page, you can click. Let's go to the envelope. Wow, we immediately made a bell type sound. Very crude, but you hear that quality? That's something that's made by two operators that are sine waves but one is at 8 foot. Now let's go to the F and let's the F operator and let's give it a long release. Okay, so it fades out. Same for E. Give it a release. As you hear as I go up the keyboard, way too bright. But let's go to key scaling. It allows you to control the volume of these sounds, the specific operators over the range of the keyboard. So we go to E, and I want to bring it down. So Nice. I like that. Now I need to do some more things to this bell. I want to make it a stereo bell, not just a mono bell. So we go to D and right-click to turn it on. And we need to right-click to turn on C. And let's set them to look exactly like E and F. Let's to 8 also. Maybe let's detune it just a little bit. And now the envelopes are very different. So let's go to the envelope page and let me show you how this works. This is the shape of F as it's shown with all the other envelopes around it. And there's a link button right here. And I need to copy the link, the, the envelope of F to D. And all you have to do is hit the link button right here and boom. And then turn that off and click on E so that you see the E envelope. And say I want to copy that to C. Done. Now I have to go to key scaling. And I need to kind of copy the same basic shape. And uh, close enough. Now let's pan one to the left, 50s, and one to the right, somewhere in the 50s. There you have a nice bright stereo FM bell sound. So if you control the velocity to D and to F, you're going to be controlling the volume of the sound. But the timbre, the brightness of it doesn't change. And instead, check out what happens when you do velocity to C and to E. Now, In closing, I want to show you one thing, because we didn't talk a lot about rhythmic envelopes, which is a really fun area of this machine, where you can have things looping and be tempo synced and all that kind of stuff. There's a really key uh, ability right here called mode. When you're dealing with rhythmic envelopes, change it to fix. Because this way you can now move segments and it's not going to change. If I have this set to slide, then anything to the right of this particular segment is going to move. Make sure you work with the mode set to fix when you're dealing with rhythmic envelopes. It's one of the big things I'm going to show you. And I almost forgot. So there you go.